Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cool baseball cake at home. Let's do this. Let's talk cake. Warning, the making of this cake may cause side effects, such as an increase in expectations, weight gain, new required traditions, which may cause undue stress, especially around special occasions and holidays. So hemisphere cake pans are really deep, so a problem that can happen is that the center won't bake as fast as the outside, but there is a solution for this, and it's called a heating rod. I highly recommend the brand Fat Daddios for the cake pan and heating rod. Who's your favorite MLB team? Comment down below. I was lucky enough to be living in Boston when the Red Sox won the World Series. It was so amazing. There were just people in the streets everywhere just celebrating and screaming and yelling and it was actually quite emotional. It was very cool. Make sure your heating rod is taller than your pan. This pan can get wobbly in the oven so you can put it in a circle cookie cutter or a cupcake pan to keep it level. So to get the full sphere we're going to be making two of these hemisphere cakes and then we're going to be putting them together. My red velvet cake recipe for carving makes enough to make a full sphere cake. So if you only have one hemisphere pan and heating rod, I recommend making half the batter and make half the cake and then make the other half of the batter again and the other half of the cake. I recommend this because when you let cake batter sit too long, it makes for a denser cake, which we do not want. When checking for doneness, I check with a toothpick about a half inch away from the heating rod. If your cake is domed up at all, you can put a towel over it and just press it down gently to flatten it out. Let your cake cool for 10 minutes before flipping it out of the pan. And remember that heating rod is going to be sticking out. So you're going to want to make sure the heating rod goes in between one of those squares in your cooling rack. I keep the heating rod in the cake until the cake cools to room temperature. So be careful though, it still could be hot. Now that the cake is cooled to room temperature, we can go ahead and cut it because we don't want that much cake without frosting. So just cut it in half and then cut just a little sliver of cake to make room for the frosting. Not too much though, cause we don't wanna screw up the shape of our circle. By the way, the trick to getting a nice straight line is by first making a little guide, like a little groove around your cake, and then uh, cut through the cake always in a circular motion, a little at a time. And then wrap it in plastic wrap and make the other side and do the same thing to that. Now we are ready to stack. All right, put your first piece on and you wanna make sure that's level. And, um, wait, hold on, <laughs> I am out of breath. I had to stop for a second and I had to get something upstairs and then downstairs and then upstairs and then downstairs. And I don't have the ability to walk upstairs for some reason, I have to run. I don't, I don't know why. Same with downstairs, I, I run stairs, I don't walk stairs. It's not because I'm so motivated, it's actually because it's less painful on my knees. <laughs> Let me know in the comments, do you run up and down your stairs or walk? I'm curious to see if I'm the only strange person in this world. Gotta love those old sports injuries. Remember when you're adding the each layer to push and twist down on it to make sure that you get out all the air bubbles. So this first layer is just the crumb coat and we're just gonna use a piece of acetate cut out from an acetate roll to frost this cake. Now that we're done crumb coating, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator for like 20, 30 minutes. I like to use an icing tip for the final frosting of the cake just to make sure I'm keeping everything even. I'm using an American crusting buttercream cream cheese frosting, of course, because it's red velvet cake. There is a link to this recipe in the video description below. For this particular cake, I want the ball to look kind of rough because it is a baseball and I want it to look like a used baseball, not a brand new one. But you may be watching this video because you're going to make some other type of ball, uh, like a volleyball, basketball, soccer ball. So you may want it smooth. If you'd like more detail how to do this, check out my video tutorial five secrets to frosting curves. For this cake, I use kind of a weird technique, which I call my crystal ball technique. So after the cake chills for about 20 to 30 minutes, I get my hands a little bit wet and then I rub the cake like a crystal ball. It's gonna make it look super smooth and it's actually really great for getting out all the bumps and making it a perfect circle. Our hands are just good at doing that um, naturally. It's a lot like pottery where you put water on the vase or whatever it is to smooth it out. But the difference with buttercream is that it's gonna dry kind of bumpy 
which is what I want, and that's why I'm using this technique. So after you rub your crystal ball, <laughs> then go ahead and smooth it out with your acetate blade again. Go ahead and put that in the refrigerator to dry off and chill. All right, we're done frosting. Now the real fun can begin. So we are going to draw those lines on the baseball. I'm smoothing out a few of the bumps using my hot blade technique. This only works with a metal blade because you put it under hot water and dry it and then the buttercream just melts away. I'm gonna use my angled spatula to draw these lines. And don't worry about the lines showing. We actually wanna see the lines to make the cake look more authentic. So to figure out where to draw the lines, just study the baseball. But I'm actually gonna do you a solid here and show you what the shape looks like if you were to flatten it out. This really helps me out with understanding the pattern and where to draw the lines. If you make a mistake, no worries. You can just erase the line by smoothing it out and redraw it. And then just clean up the lines a little bit. You know, if there's little chunks of buttercream, um, just so it looks nice. And then you can put it in the refrigerator for 20 to 30 minutes to chill. If you're considering buying a house with stairs, I urge you to weigh out the pros and cons. <laughs> so one of the pros is it's forced exercise. But the con is also that it's forced exercise. On days you're not tired, it's great. But on days that you're tired, for example, if you have a newborn and you're totally sleep deprived, I have found myself using a laundry basket like a walker just to get up the stairs. <laughs> and every time I have to go up or down the stairs, it's like I'm packing for a trip. I'm like, okay, do I have everything I need? Because <laughs> the thought of having to make unnecessary trips is just sounds like a nightmare. All right, take your cake out of the refrigerator before putting on the stitching. While the cake is hard and chilled, we're gonna push in those lines a little bit deeper. Try to do more pushing than dragging because we don't wanna you know, make more of a buttercream mess, but we do wanna deepen that line. That's really gonna make this look authentic. All right, it's time to put the red stitching on the ball. So you wanna pipe just like an arrow pointing to the left on the top and then when you get to the bottom it should be pointing to the right and i like to pipe the red stitch from the outside and then bring it into the line because i like to make a little bit of a dot there to start because it gives a nice illusion of the stitch kind of going into the ball and as you're piping these stitches make sure you're always using the line as a guide for where you place each stitch and at what angle I think grass is a nice touch. It adds a little more color and authenticity. The trick for piping grass is to make sure that you build up enough buttercream at the base so that the buttercream sticks to the cake board before you start to pull away. As you pull away, slowly start releasing the pressure on the bag. And when it's at the length you want, stop pressure completely and jerk the bag away. And I like to pull the bag away at different angles so the grass looks more realistic. If I accidentally get some green on the ball, I just wipe it a little bit so it looks like a grass stain and I just leave it. It actually makes it look more realistic because I'm going more for a baseball that looks dirty. If you're liking this video, click the thumbs up button to let me know. I also think another really nice personal touch is to add the person's name and their number or their age and make it look kind of like an autograph that also makes the baseball look really realistic. I have a video on this if you don't know how to do this, but the biggest tip is not to move your wrist and instead move your arm to write. This cake looks amazing. I absolutely love it. And please take pictures of your cakes and send them to me. I love getting pictures. Let me know in the comments what you'd like me to bake and make next. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next time.